plug in. I'm Andrew Sparby. My chapter was Fred Calls Buck from Dr. Strangelove. Um, just the cover page, but these are some examples of uh, what I did. It's check the side and make sure it's on. No, if it's right. connected. I'm afraid you're going to have to do it the other way. Sorry. So, uh, this is just like the first slide I did. Um, I was messing around with just a shape for the woman. She's the only woman in the whole movie, uh, Miss Scott. And I wanted to make her feminine and also like try and give her a sexy vibe as much as I could with geometric shapes. Um, Definitely didn't like that first one. Secondly, I moved on to like square for Buck and kind of an hourglass shape for Miss Scott. And that was a bit simple. These are just process work for my other ones I kind of threw on there. You'll see that later. So I decided to give them more detail. I like this and this is what I had uh, as I was going through, and I eventually realized that I needed more detail just to like, convey emotion, um, so I ended up putting faces on them as well. Um, more process work. And this is just right away, I still hadn't fully decided on the colors yet, so this is me trying to lay out a scene. Uh, initially, I was thinking more just showing what I saw in the movie, and I realized that I needed to get more, change it up and show it how I see it and kind of how I envision it. So right away, I had her laying on the bed, tanning with the sun lamp, and the phone up in the corner, and that was just a bit too literal. Changed it a little bit there. Then I had when Buck comes in and answers the phone, she lays back down on the bed. Didn't like either of those, so I did a split screen with her answering the phone and he's off in the toilet, um, you know, angry and whatnot, assumingly clogged it. <laughs> And this is when they're yelling back and forth. <clears throat> Next scene, this is, uh, I tried to recreate the mirror in the hotel room. And she's on the phone, pretty simple. This one's got a little more depth to it. And then I got when he came in, didn't like those. These were my original ones, and I ended up switching up to give them more detail and whatnot. This is another thing I tried. Um, the bed there, the mirror. I like the whole setup, but it's still just not, doesn't really convey emotion. So I ended up going with Buck talking on the phone. She's laying on the bed, like looking at him, kind of sexy. Uh, he's talking to the other general, who we could assume also has a woman laying in bed, uh, and so on, <laughs> relaying the message. Some process work I did for the bomb. Just some circles, oval, combined shapes. And this is the third scene. So the idea of this is even though the world is under threat of complete destruction, the guys are just more worried about the women and sex and whatnot. So he's smiling and happy and she's laying there and the bomb's going off in the background, and they don't really care, everybody's happy. <laughs> so, final scenes again.
Okay, some comments, some questions? Yes. Oh, why did you choose to not use black at all? Well, black's just really strong, and I guess other than outlines, I didn't feel like it was necessary. I felt like I could get more done with gray. Um, just, it's more neutral. Uh, having a background, because I like to be able to choose, use all my colors for kind of what I want, and black is just really dark. And I can use blue for a lot of the darker stuff. I think it has a good effect here because the film is black and white, so bright colors and that sort of stuff aren't really essential. You really just need color here to distinguish one shape and person from the other and kind of balance out some of the compositions. So I think having these very subdued colors has, it's like a similar effect to the black and white film that you know you you have to look for the real distinctions there. Other questions and comments? Yes. A few times, um, I like how you set up your scenes, but a few times I was confused that she was lying on a bed. Like it kind of just looked like a flat like table. Yeah. Maybe if you add like especially in the last scene that's still highlighted, maybe if you add like pillows or like uh, like sheets or something or maybe she's a little bit under the covers, like oh. like something like that, it might distinguish that it's like actually a bed. Like I understand because I've seen the movie as well, but like it could be a little confusing that she's lying on a bed. Right. I think that's a good point. There are just a few details you could tweak here. Actually I don't think I would change the essence of any of the final slides. But I I wouldn't be timid about putting some boobs on these ladies uh. here. There, there are almost too many angles by the time you've, you've got them there. We need just a little more curvature, I think. Yeah. Just little details like that, you know. Um, it's really, uh, I like the, the second scene very, very well with the, using the mirrors to, to mirror each situation as you move it down the line. That's really, really a great idea. Um, other questions and comments here. This one really envision, re envisions. Mm -hmm. I really like the. It, there feels like there's a continuation between the first and second slides in that it, there's sort of a split between the characters. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I really like that. Thank you. <laughs> Does your scene, I can't remember exactly where it cuts, does it end with her telling him telling her to to fire up her engines and wait for him yeah, yeah, to come back? Uh, yeah, right. Fuck, you'll be back before you can say blast off. Right, right. <laughs> right. Start the countdown, yeah. Yeah, I think the hands are really great for that, the arms up in there. <laughs> other, <laughs> other questions and comments about it? Yes. Uh, on your delivery, you spent a lot of time looking at the screen and facing uh -huh. away from from your audience. I do have a problem with that, yeah. Yeah, so uh, just something to watch. Uh, your volume's good and, and that, but just make sure you're looking out here. Okay. Yeah, Andrew, you didn't call everybody by name and all that sort of thing that really um, the delivery needed some work there and you need to remember that for the next presentation later in the term. But I like very much what you do with the slides. And I think it was interesting. It was good, a good amount of process work and explanation. What you're doing in this one that people don't always do is you're showing us how you're fumbling for the idea to begin with. And then it just clarifies and it goes straight through there. And I think that's a, um, a really a good thing there. Um, on the very last slide, you might want to reposition her too on the bed. You, as I said, you might want to do a little tweaking on all these. Because you can tell when you reduce the size of that, that you're getting a kind of photobomb effect that the, literally the bomb seems to be coming out of her head. Uh -huh. you know, so you might want to, to tweak a little bit on, on something like that in terms of the composition of that slide. Anyone else? I forgot your name. Charlie. Charlie. Uh, I just, I like the idea that uh, even though, say, with the 
the plunder and like showing the other other people. I mean, it wasn't like they never said what was happening, but you kind of took it in your own hands and like you brought an idea to the table. I think you did that really well. But yeah, and the hint is there because she's on the phone at first calling him, oh, Freddie, you know. So you, you know that all of the situation is not unique to the, the two who are in that hotel room at the time, that this is commonplace. And of course, by the time we get to the end of the film, we're going to know where everybody's, you know, all the guys are thinking about in the very end when the bomb has literally gone off. So um, it's great as foreshadowing that kind of, of situation. Thank you very much. Alejandra, we're not going to get to you today, obviously.